This is episode 96 of Art Cafe. In this episode, I sat down with Ilya Kuvshinov. Uh, Ilya has been on the show probably around a year ago, and there has been some development uh, on his side. Some new projects he worked on, we'll discuss and talk about, as well as other news. Um, this is a very cool one. I love that guy. Uh, I hope you guys are gonna enjoy the show. So let's go. one on the screen <laughs> uh, yeah it's, it's it's just for you it's pretty awesome i'm not gonna lie <laughs> dude when was the uh, last when was the last time we spoke uh, i believe it's like a year ago maybe a year and a half and i was like even on that time i was like i want to talk more i want to talk about the movie uh, um help down i want to like sh explain how it worked i want to show what i've done because i'm really proud of this work yeah, yeah. and like like last time i was recording now recording now right yeah 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 i i completely forgot but last time i wanted to talk about how your works are you know impacted me so uh i first like found your works uh 2003 and it was like the last of us concept art and i was blown away you know i was <laughs> like oh my god this is beautiful like at the time i was working on like game uh, development company and i was doing like the same stuff uh so not not the same you know like just doing concepts of everything so locations characters like guns, uh, props, everything, everything, everything. And when mm -hmm. I see your like Last of Us works, I was like, wow, this is just another level. This guy is just another level, man. And like I had it on my like wallpaper all the time. <laughs> you, know, you know, this one with, uh, with uh, like post and water. And I'm sorry, I, I should have loaded, downloaded the foreign show on screen. So good, man. Yeah. So, yeah, like. Uh, I'm uh, really enjoying everything you do, and I have Thank like you. Really, um, yeah, uh, I respect you so much. <laughs> and when I was like 23, when I see your works, I'm like, I, I want to become like this guy. I want to, I want to do this stuff. And uh, dude, you're making me blush. What the hell? <laughs> yeah, and which with each year, I've seen more and more of your works. Like you know. Ghost in the Shell design, uh, the you know a lot of other real movies for like for me like working on a movie it's like this dream like pipe dream and I was like wow there's there's people who are doing that and enjoying that and you you can see like you can you know see your uh, Last of Us images without playing the game and they are awesome as just art itself you can you know put it in the frame. Uh, do you have like high resolution of that one? I want to. I want to bring that. Yeah, I would need to. I would need to dig into my hard drive. You know, the, the 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 saddest story of it all was that when I was working on Ghost in the Shell, yeah. right after I finished the project, I think I've saved. Um, I was doing a back. I can't. I can't remember what exactly I was doing, but I was doing a backup, and I was. You know, I've I've managed to like save all the JPEGs. Yeah. And I I think. That was right before I got my um, USB, which is like the the battery unit, basically yeah. preventing from surges and, um, you know, like power outages and whatnot. And I don't know what, what exactly happened, but and it's probably my fault. Like, I, I'm pretty sure I messed up, but it, I had a, like a power surge or it was like an outage or something. And the computer went down. When, when I booted up, it started like, throwing errors and i finally go into windows boot it up i'm looking at my hard drive and it's gone <laughs> oh and i had it God. i had it in the raid system i think it was raid 5 or so like it was the raid system that has one hard drive as a backup yeah. and i think what happened is because of 
because of I, maybe it was a surge or maybe it was like an error or something or maybe it was just like a coincidence but two out of like four hard drives died and i lost all the work <laughs> oh, my god. oh my god so i have like but no were send sending these pictures to you know to the client right they have it right yeah so i mean you know normally when you work in films uh, unless they request the the work files yeah. they you don't like they you don't need to send them over and you know i was lucky enough because i was working a lot with fusion 360 um so and and i had a backup backup for that and i was sending those files through like the you know their uh ftps so i still had still had uh, access to that so i, I managed to get like vast majority majority oh. of my 3d models okay. but not the scenes and renders you know so like i had those setups for you know for the geishas and for yeah. and i just lost it it's like fuck, oh dude. that was the worst yeah. use um, dropbox man use dropbox yeah well the problem with dropbox is that once you work on films you have to be really careful where you're placing your work you know because if it leaks then you're in trouble uh, yeah. So I only use Dropbox when the studio is yeah. like there's they are specifically using Dropbox or Box. You know, there's like uh, there's Dropbox, Box, and there are like other systems yeah. that they work with. So in those situations, I do that. Uh, but more recently, I actually got um, NAS system. You know, like the sort of like in-house, like your personal little yeah. uh, server station. It's yeah. called NAS. I, I I got the same one that Ash has. Uh, it's it's a Synology. It has like eight bays, like eight drives. Okay. Uh, I think it's like thirty terabyte, but it has like redundancy for two disks. Thirty um, terabyte. I got. Yeah, and it's and it's and it's a pretty pretty solid system. So at least now, like I have a backup of that <laughs> and the internal hard drive backup. You know, so I know yeah. I'm not gonna lose any files anymore. But that was that was yeah that was bad <laughs> you wanted, you and i think i lost my work files from from the last of us as well when it come when it come to that i do have like i think i have high-res images from the oh from, yeah. but i'll have to look it up like i don't i don't remember i would have to Please. like dig into my files <laughs> I, you know i i want it like print it and and, and you should sign it <laughs> <laughs> you know actually um what was that company cook and baker i think or ba backer let me uh, that. cook they and becker yeah. um i'll send you a link after uh we cool. finish this but it's it's a cook and becker so c o o k a n d b e c k e r dot com okay uh it's uh it's a dutch company and they were doing like the exclusive um exclusive um like prince prints. prince yeah and they did uh the run for for the last of us and uh oh. i think i have let's see i think i have two or three images there oh so uh could you like can you sign it or something so they print it and they are signed i think they are signed i think they are signed i don't remember exactly I know a lot of uh, people who could arrange that this podcast <laughs> right now. They wanted to, so um, maybe you're in trouble. Oh, they actually have like hold on, one, two, three, four, five, six. Oh my god, seven <laughs> images. That's a lot. It's seven a lot. or eight, actually. Cool. Yeah, mine, John Sweeney's, Ashley Shudowski. Yeah. And Hyung Nam. John nice. Sweeney's freaking killing it right now he's working on the, <laughs> yeah. the last of us too he's i think he's the art director right now yeah on the on the show and dude the game's just bonkers it looks amazing but yeah, anyways last of us too looks like impossible <laughs> what's going on there yeah naughty dog dude naughty the dog. Ta talented dudes let's talk about your project though because you know we kind of wanted to talk about it a little last time we we were on a podcast but you know it wasn't out you, you guys were still in development so obviously nda was an issue we couldn't talk much so we just decided like only say that you were working on something that we can't talk about yeah but something... now the project's out so let's definitely talk about that it's called it's 
that's the birthday wonderland right yeah so uh original name is the birthday wonderland but it looks like when it will be released in like, like other countries mm -hmm. uh it's gonna be called like the the wonderland so gotcha uh, yeah original name of the book it's based on is like a mystery trip from the uh like cellar <laughs> And yeah, and but it it was changed a lot. So the script uh, was uh, it, it's based on this book, you know. But the, yeah. yeah, it was changed to be more fun, you know, and interesting. And it, it's like kids' book, so uh, they wanted for like adults to enjoy it as well. So they put new characters, put like interesting dialogues. I loved it. Yeah, it's, so it's, okay. it's, I guess it's an adaptation, <laughs> right? So like you have a yeah. you have a comic. It's it's very similar. Well, to a point, like <clears throat> Acura would be would be a bit, but then Acura was directed by the by the same guy who actually made the books. So, so yeah, this is. Good but guy. it's like I guess sim similarities are, are are there, or like I guess Ghost in the Shell and uh, Mamoru Oshii, you know, yeah. and then and his interpretation of 1995, where the books are, you know, sim like they're it's the same world, but. Uh, the story uh, excerpt and uh, the style of it is like it's 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 its very own thing. Um, so I'm guessing it's a, s a similar situation here. Uh, yeah, you know uh, the original writer for uh, uh, like of the book on which our movie is based is actually the same person on which like Spirited Away was based on. But oh, nice. you know. Miyazaki direct, director Miyazaki changed so much in the original book for like uh, Spirited Away. So she's like, yeah, don't put my name there because it's not <laughs> connected anymore. But this time it's like there's some characters like the names are all these characters are the same. So she's like, OK, and like uh, and original writer for the book. She really loved our movie and it was like it, it was great. That's awesome. because. Yeah, it was changed so much, but she was like in, in agreement. She was like, "I'm okay with change and stuff." <laughs> yeah, and we were like, "Yes, let's do it." Like, I guess you know, like when you're translating uh, to to the screen, it's it's very difficult to go like exactly yeah, with the same story because watch because you know there's a lot of scenes in the books where nothing happened and people would just you know <laughs> fall asleep in the scene as if it was like that. So that's why they changed it so much. So uh, the uh, the how I get this work is like really interesting story. Let me talk about it a little bit. So here's my they contacted me through the book publishing company because mm -hmm. I don't have mail for anywhere to contact. And they they like we are Fuji TV. We want to talk to you. And I was like Fuji TV. So they want like some interview or something. Uh, but yeah. We met with the director and he was like, can you please do the, like at first he was shocked. I'm, I'm Russian and <laughs> not, not a girl. <laughs> I'm like, I, I wanted to see like really blonde, beautiful uh, girl. And just, this is just some guy. And Didn't we talk about like, that last time when I, when I said like, I thought you were a girl before, before we actually yeah. started talking. <laughs> I get so used to that. Uh, yeah. That's funny. And on the first meeting he was like, please do characters for our movie and i was like yeah and everybody was laughing because like th th this was fast so what do we do now like <laughs> it just started and after that we talked a little bit more and he was like uh i also need like the location design prop design mecha design uh a, a, lot, a lot of stuff do you know anybody who can do that and i was like yeah i know <laughs> i know uh, a guy and <laughs> like back in russia <laughs> Back in Russia, I was working on a motion comic called The Knights of the Void. And I was doing the storyboards and some of the designs of the, you know, all, it was like science fiction project. So all the like different planets and aliens and weapons. I was uh, supervising the design a lot because like storyboards took a lot of time. So uh, I've, I've worked on creating the world. So I, I was like, can, can I do that? And he's like, can you do that? <laughs> yeah, so I, I showed him my previous works and he's like, mm, it's looking all right. Let's 
test something, like do some test locations. If and if we okay with that, let's do that too. And I said, yeah, sure. But uh, I, I will gonna uh, do everything I can for this movie. But please, Kei Chihara director, can you please uh, teach me how to be an animation director? Can you please show me how this works? Can I be on all the meetings you are uh, gonna uh, be? Can you like? show me every, how everything works and he's like okay nice so you just basically went to a meeting i want to do all by the way teach me so i can be the yes. boss and <laughs> because i'm gonna do so much can you please teach me how to be director so i i made really really clear that, that my dream is to become animation director and he's like he's really an awesome person he really teached me a lot explained me a lot we was talking not only about like, the animation production but you know Living in Japan, all, all these you know rules mm -hmm. they don't speak about, but they there are some rules. So, for example, you bought something in convenience store, right, and have this plastic bag. When you go home, you never put this plastic bag with the food on 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 the uh, floor, because like it's a food. You never put food on right. the floor. So you need to put it on the table. So <laughs> I didn't know that, and <laughs> one day like. Uh, uh, I get back from the convenience store with like my food in a plastic bag. I put it on like uh, the floor under my desk, and he was like, "Oh, Ilya, we we don't do that here." <laughs> 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 and explained that. So, like he really like was like my mentor, uh, and I'm so grateful for him to you know you know to, to choose me to work here to like. Let me in all the insights of the processes, and yeah, and not 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 just designs. I asked him if I can do like animation supervising. Uh, it's like I need to read. I can. I don't need to, but I can. I have the right to redraw anything uh, that's gonna came up on the screen. So backgrounds, characters, the movements, the animals, props. Uh, I was redrawing like each each scene. I believe there's there wasn't any scene I wasn't like fixing something. So it's like we have 1,400 scenes in the movie, and I was putting a lot of edits in mm. that. <clears throat> so it, it looks looked like like this. Uh, let me check it out. Hi, image supervising. So yeah. Uh, I was like, so for example, animator does the character, but it doesn't really look like the character. So I need to fix the face, right? Or if, if even like the body proportions is not uh, exactly as a design, I need to like fix it too. So like this part of this job was like very very fun because if you're fixing animation after like really like uh, skillful guy you learn from him, you know, like, wow, yeah. he, he's drawing the face like this. This is so interesting. So I've done like 3000 of uh, sketches like this. Yeah. And it's, it's like, it, when I'm thinking like about it, I'm like, wow, if somebody would tell me I need to do 3000 pictures to work like in two years. And I was like, oh, no, 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 I don't I can't do it. But you know, if you do it, just like 50 a day, like 100 a day max, it's like, it's okay. You don't need to do all 3,000 uh, right now. So this this is what, this was like the, um, the part of this job I'm really proud of because uh, thanks to this animation and supervising sketches, I get much better with drawing. Mm, yeah. Like uh, anything, you know. I <laughs> so can tell in, by looking at your... Emotion, yeah, you can, you know, my, my personal illustration, the, the, there's girls, a lot of girls, and they are not smiling, they don't not showing any emotion, so they like, you know, fashion models or something. Mm -hmm. And But I really, I, I love showing emotions in my pictures. It just, uh, like, my personal uh, taste is this, you know, kind of a little bit cold, a, a little bit emotionless person, right. looking like, beautiful, right? But uh, in the movie, I've done so many crazy uh, emotions, and you know, like the like uh, for example, like if person 
if character is scared, like his uh, eyes suddenly become like really big and stuff. So it was so much fun. So we can see some screenshots of the like the final image. Yeah, it looks awesome. I, I can tell that when I was watching the trailer, it's like, oh, it's Ilya the movie. <laughs> yes, I, I really love doing that. So uh, it's pretty awesome. Yeah, they, they give me the chance to everything. <laughs> <laughs> chance to you know to do everything, and I I felt like they are respecting you know my position. So anything I say, like I want to fix that, they like okay. <laughs> I, I never I never have been trusted with so much uh, in my life, and everybody around on the studio studio i'm sorry i say it in japanese uh <laughs> everybody around in the studio they was like really kind to me because it was my first animation work ever and i didn't know a lot of things so there was some really strange stuff about like i thought i should like draw much much less details on the characters because mm -hmm. you know animator is going to draw like hundreds of pictures of this character so I'm trying to get it simple and in my head like the, the simplest thing uh, things are should be there and it's like i wanted to like silhouette silhouette of the characters look realistic but not have a lot of details inside uh, and I was like, let's get rid of uh, the. So, for example, you have clothes, and mm -hmm. it folds. And I hate it when folds on like really bright color. Full uh, clothes are like the same black line as the outline. And I was like, let's do the folds uh, on uh, characters' clothing. Color of these folds depending on uh, what's the color of the clothes so it's not going to be the same color as the outline and i thought it's gonna like you know <laughs> help and it was uh, not, not like this so people <laughs> need to take another pencil to draw these lines to show that there is uh, the colors will not be the same as the outline and people hated it right yeah but it looks i really like how it looks so if you see like here on the character with the yellow shirt, mm -hmm. you're just lines, and they are not black. Uh, it it given it like uh, Gives more like a subtle detail it. instead of like this. Yeah, yeah. Not like overdoing that. So yeah, here you can see like orange uh, folds here. I I loved it, and <laughs> this is one of the reasons our movie looks like 3D CG, because you know. When you do 3D CG with cell look, uh, like with lines and this uh, like hard shadows, uh, usually it's like outline of the objects is really strong, but all stuff inside are like textures, are they much softer? Mm -hmm. So, like because of this shirt and because of this blush on the character's face, it's like they all look like 3D CG sometimes, and people are like what. Is it 3D CG? And I was like, no, it's 2D anime. And they like, uh, why does it look 3D CG? <laughs> yeah. So it was real fun. And yeah, let me ask you this. What do you, what do you think about that? Because a lot of animation that is like anime specifically that is coming out more recently feels like it's going towards that 3D CG direction, right? Yeah. Uh, it's very, very, uh, not rare. I, I mean, pre you, you, you know much much better about the subject but to me it seems like there's not that many hand-drawn animations anymore yeah there. the problem is there's not enough people who could do that and you know for 3d animation what what do you need you know you need uh, like motion capture studio and the people who will fix the mocap mo mo animation into like normal animation after that uh, and uh, in all of this you don't need to draw you know you don't need to be good at drawing you don't need to be good at you know uh, yeah pencils and stuff so we can hire more for 3d cg animation and it's easier i guess yeah so uh, for example if we need the 3d character to move we need a person to model it we need a person to rig it you know we need a person to move it and nobody, nobody of these people don't need to draw, you know? Yeah. But if you do it 2D animated, 
movie, you need everyone to be good at drawing, you know, like the director should be good at storyboarding so you could see the frame and realize like what's the angle of the characters, what's their emotion, what's the what's on the background, right? Mm-hmm. So animators, of course, need to be good at drawing because, you know, they draw uh, a movie like by hand. And all the like animation supervisors, designers, they are all draw- drawing people. So, so much talent in one place <laughs> means that there is nobody in other place who can do that. So this is the problem. Like we need more people. We need more like foreigners who love anime, who can speak Japanese, who go to drawing to help us because we are dying here. <laughs> I mean, it's it's so much easier to just do a CG model and do easy in easy in and out uh, in an animation. You know, slap a CG CG shader, like a yeah. cell shader, um, yeah. and it just works. And it's just like so you don't have to draw frame by frame by frame. Yeah, uh, and, and make sure it look it is all model good. Uh, perfectly right. Uh, yeah, it, the model uh, like the character will never look ugly. Because the person who drawn the animation by hand just uh, were really tired and now character is ugly and you need to fix it. You know, in 3D <laughs> CG, it's, it's not happening anymore. So it's yeah, like, yeah. Maybe like some really ugly motion would be there, but it's really to, you know, easy to fix. So it's much better for also like no crunches, you know, 3D CG, <laughs> no true. crunches. That's true. You just press render. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, you, you can, if you fix something, you like fix it, re-render. Okay. So, but into the animation. So, you know, uh, to, like going back to the movie, uh, all, all, all of the designs, all of the animation supervising, it's all, it's not all. I also done a couple of scenes of animation myself. So I, I animated. Fully. Nice. And I've done one minute scene uh like flashback scene it's it's just like moving illustrations mm-hmm. it's like one minute so i've done everything for that i've done uh all the illustrations i've done all the after effects stuff so how they move and like effects and stuff so it was fun so i tried uh, a lot of stuff there and the the hardest part was when closer to the deadline we of course you know uh we needed more people to help us and there wasn't enough people. So they were sending the, uh, our scenes to draw the in-betweens of the animation. So for example, uh, the animation animator person done like five mm-hmm. uh, steps of this animation, but we need like 50. Right. And they, they send it to other country and these people are just drawing in-betweens. And uh, f- stuff is like this in between s- still need to be fixed. So yeah, yeah. all of this stuff like get back from the other country and uh, one by one I redraw it again because there's some misunderstanding of the shape of the character's uh, face, for example, right? And there's a w- was a lot of work here and in some situations like we we also give the uh, detailing. So for example, animator done like the rough movements and animation supervising, it is me, just uh, drawn a face on the top of it. So so it looked like this character. So it looked like it, it's in, like, like it's in design, right? Right. And then they, after that, they send this like rough animations uh, with my fixes to other person and there was a lot of situation when this other person who need to do details so they they need to you know draw all, all the lines of the character in, in like you know finished state they are haven't seen my fixes so when the scenes get back i need to add my fixes again so we draw again after that I don't know I know what it happened but they just what what's this <laughs> like animation supervising sketches I don't need that I just like uh, draw over the original like really rough stuff and uh, there was a moment when I haven't slept for three days just being in the 
being in the studio, fixing all of this uh, without like, you know, uh, sleeping and getting back home. Oh, like one time I get back home to shower <laughs> and, and go back and to get, work <laughs> yeah, and get back to work. Yeah, Dude, that's like, crazy. It's like, maybe it's not three days, but at least like 70. Uh, no, oh, I forgot. The 70. Yeah, 70 hours. Uh, so it's like, yeah, yeah, three days without never sleeping. That's crazy. It was like, it, it, it was destroying for me. Like, it makes uh, me tired, listen, tired listening to it. Yeah, so <laughs> the thing is, all that time, it, I was like really, it's like was a lot of adrenaline in my blood, right? So I didn't need to, I didn't felt I want to sleep. I didn't need to eat or something. I was just doing, doing, doing this. I want, I want to quality of our movie be the best it could it should right and mm-hmm. i was withdrawing withdrawing everything again uh again and again and it becomes better 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 but it's not enough there's still things i couldn't fix because uh, you know this uh when the scenes get back from the person who was doing the you know detailing and i've seen it's ignored my fixes again and just redraw over the original rough animations it was too late you know it's just we, we need to give the files to the right uh, to tomorrow and there's too much work there to redraw it and i just like okay this one scene is gonna be like this forever <laughs> yeah it's just very hard to let go scene, huh? I'm, I'm like really feel bad about it but it's like i I done my work, you know. I put my animation supervising sketches, and just other person needed to, you know, trace my face with the body of the, uh, you know, rough sketch to do it final. But he just didn't do that. So there is a scene the character's faces looks like it's done by other person. <laughs> I don't know. What... But when you, I mean, when you watch some of the animes, like even the the very popular ones, like even just Ghost in the Shell, right? Like 1995, it's like to me, it's like, wow, that's one of the best animes I've ever seen. But sometimes, it's perfect. When I, yeah, but sometimes when I examine the the look of you know, the faces, they're like, oh, that's kind of weird, you know, <laughs> like it looks kind of weird from this angle. It happens. Yeah. Yeah, happens I guess it's a compromise. It's, it's, so it's not like the animation supervisor was lazy and he said, ah, I don't do that. It It's more about, it's not enough hands to, you know, yeah, do properly everything. Sense. So there, there's need to be some. How many scenes. people were on this, on this show? Like, if, if you don't mind me asking, I'm just curious, like how many, how many uh, manpower it takes, you know, to so, get uh, in the studio. Like it was like, yeah, sorry. In the studio, it was like 50 people. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we have a lot of uh, like freelance animators doing that, like maybe twenty. So that's that's that. And of course, we were doing in betweens to the other companies, to the other countries. There's right. a lot of people there. But like yeah, the main sourcing stuff, and, and stuff. Yeah, it was like director, uh, KHR, me as like design. Uh, I don't know, d- design doing guy, and animators. It was mm-hmm. like fifty. Them. And there was uh, the people, I, I don't know, I, I don't know how to say it in English. Like they, they call desk. Uh, this person who take uh, like drone scenes from one person to another. So like, if uh, animators have finished like uh, rough sketch of the scene, uh, the desk person would take this uh paper okay yeah and deliver it to the other person for example animation supervisor who just like who fix stuff and give it back to to the desk and she's going to some other guy to fix to for example to show it to director and so you you guys did it old school like yeah yeah yeah. it was all paper man it was (laughs) oh wow (laughs) it was all the light tables so my light table was from Studio Ghibli, and it's even, I, I, even. I was like, I was thinking about you know, looking at that stuff and about to ask like, so do you guys like work with Illustrator or like Clip Studio? Like, what is what's what's the deal? And like, all paper. <laughs> that is crazy. That's like super old school. But that's yeah, but awesome. I really love that. Oh yeah, I, I I honestly I'll tell you, you know I, I haven't seen the movie obviously because it's not out in uh, yeah 
in US. Uh, I'll be curious to see it if it if it comes here. I'm pretty sure like once the DVD and and Blu-ray comes out, I'll be able to. Yeah, see I it. want the kids to show it in the cinema, but they not talking to me. I don't know. J J kids, if you're hearing that, contact me, please. <laughs> want to show the movie in America. Um, but when I was, you know, I I've, I I saw the trailer and I, I could tell that the way the animations were done and just like the the attention to the characters in terms of how they look and how consistently they look across the whole movie it's like yeah that that does not look like a cheap quick you know anime let's let's make it happen you know yeah. uh, it it definitely did not look like a cg um <laughs> you know you. 3d cg which was like you know i i've seen uh, blame on netflix uh and you know, I, I, I liked it. It wasn't bad. It's just like it felt too smooth and perfectly three-dimensional, you know? That was yeah, like yeah, my, yeah. my, my biggest like pet peeve. Have this little, you know, you don't feel it like real because it's too perfect. Yeah. I guess there is something about um, the imperfection. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hand drawings are, you know, you can feel you mm -hmm. can feel the hand of the person who done it and like it's really important but like moving 3d model in 3d space it's too perfect you can add effects you know to that you can right. add imperfections in the video like grain you know and stuff and it will be looks like more real and <laughs> yeah more. but yeah not, not like you, you were talking about the quality of the movie of the trailer and that's all thanks to the like really like skilled animators who worked for us. So mm -hmm. there was uh, Arai San, and he's the guy who done the uh, tank tank battle scene in the end of the Ghost in the Shell. When oh. the battle come here with the big gun and bam bam on the on the tank, this is this guy. And uh, one, we, my, one we of my favorite scenes. Having, like, <laughs> hmm? one of my favorite scenes. Uh, yes, he's so good. Yeah, and we had a lot of. Uh, people from Ghibli working on mm -hmm. our project and it's like it's really fun to watch there's a scene in like there's a city big city and I've done a lot of like mobs for that and uh, like when animating uh, when doing animation supervising when fixing you know character spaces I didn't fix the uh, mobs mm -hmm. so there's this scene where all the mobs uh on, in this uh, area, in this you know city, they all looks like from Ghibli's movie because the <laughs> Ghibli person were doing these mobs, and I don't fix the faces, and this is so much fun. So uh, really cool stuff. And it's not like only just animators. There were people who care, you know. Yeah. There were people who wanted it to be the best quality we can do, and I'm like I'm really grateful for all the people in our team who like they really worked so much hard because yeah there, there was this problem because it's uh my my characters is have have this how do i say it it's not it's of course it's like really look anime uh look but they have this strict rules about how the mouth is on the face it's always in center Mm -hmm. So in anime, you know, in a side, there's even side face, the uh, mouth usually moves a little bit right. to, the, to the camera so you can see like how, how it moves. And uh, in my case, in these this characters, you, if you draw face, it needs to be like perfectly three dimensional. You can't just move mouth anywhere you want. So people were really struggling with that. So you you can't, you know, when doing like that, you can't just imitate that you draw something. You need to really like do the center line, <laughs> yeah. do the mouth on the center line and open it. And that when open, mouth is open, you also need to move chin a little because, you know, when you talk, you move your uh, chin or how should I say it? Like this part of the skull, the... Yeah, the chin and the, and the jaw and the, the, jaw, the chin, jaw. yeah yeah. So the people was really struggling with that, <laughs> and they, there was a lot of. Oh yeah, you're right. Like when so when you watch some of the animes, uh, 
the, it's like usually it's just a mouth moving, but like the face is basically yeah. like stand still. <laughs> Joe is not moving, and I and like I'm really <laughs> feeling like I I don't really like it, but it's sometimes it's cute, you know. Like if it's cute yeah. girl talking and her mouth is just like uh, just changing the size, it's, it's cute. If if for like for a split second her. Uh, face would become a little bit longer. She mm -hmm. will be a little bit less cute in this frame, and they don't want it, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a lot of that, and people were really pros. Like all the team were really pros, but I feel a little bit bad because like this strange rules for my characters that they are was struggling with. But so next time uh, I work in. Okay, okay, I can say it. I'm working on the next movie of the same director, Keech Hara, and this time I will not gonna do the designs like in 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 this uh, mm -hmm. state, right? So I've done all the angles, all the emotions, all the details of the clothes, how it looks like, uh, and in movement and stuff. But next time I decided I should do like in Japanese you can say it like character gengang, so it's like original sketches of the character but it's not like like this fully so, fleshed out details so, 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 uh, mm -hmm. I, for the next movie i've just done this illustrations of the characters and the character design will be done by other person who you know who know how to draw characters for animators to not struggle with right drawing. right so yeah i decided i would never do this again <laughs> <laughs> But what an experience, though! Like it's it's kind of crazy to sort of like you basically jumped in, j jumped into the project like head first into the deep waters. Like I want to yeah. do it all. I want to learn everything. <laughs> the thing is, I didn't know. Yeah, like I didn't know a lot about animation production in Japan, and now you I know, didn't now know, you know they everything. don't. They don't give yes everything design of everything to just one person. So there's always like person who doing designs just for characters person right. who do design just for locations character person who doing design just for the props car, a person who doing design or for for mechanical objects like cars and tanks and robots mm -hmm. and i didn't know that <laughs> so that's why i was like uh can i do this too and they like <laughs> okay <laughs> and I'm, I'm like this. This is an unbelievable experience. I learned a lot. So about the architecture, about you know the, the animals, how they move, about the uh, styles of the you know uh, how should I say it like kitchen stuff you know and uh, uh, so spoons. Mm -hmm. Why why there are these shapes? Why uh, like for for some type of alcohol you should use this type of uh, glass for other type of alcohol you should that type of glass because you know for example if it's like really strong alcohol with like beautiful smell you want the top of your glass be uh, a little bit more uh, like smaller <laughs> so the smell will not go away soon so I learned yeah. so much it was so much fun yeah it's pretty impressive um, I, I know you mentioned last time we spoke about you know that project you were working on and you, you only briefly told me you know what's going on like without any details obviously yeah. um but you know like out i remember when you posted about the film coming out for the first time uh i think it was a trailer i i, I know you were posting images as well but but eventually like, i think you posted trailer, trailer. Yeah, maybe the trailer was the first, but I remember when I saw the trailer for the first time, it's like, oh, like, it's you, the movie. <laughs> you know? Yeah, everybody's saying, like, yeah, the movie, here we go. <laughs> it's like, the thing is, I, no, I'm not a big fan of a fantasy, so, like, this movie is, is something like road movie fantasy, so mm -hmm. characters always moving from location to location, always, like, different uh you know uh backgrounds always different characters around always something changing a lot of, like really fun stuff and i wasn't into fantasy before that and the director too it it's his first fantasy movie fantasy oriented or something how should i say it what and 
I enjoyed it so much because you need to think about this world who like looks like our world, but it's different. But where's the differences? So, for example, we came up with the clock used in this world and is like calendar clock. So they it have a lot of this, you know, clock hands and it's show it, showing not only the time and, you know, minutes and uh, hours and seconds it all, mm. it's also show the year it's also show the month and also show in the week <laughs> so <laughs> it was so much fun and you know all this like uh, rules for that for example in this world they don't have uh, uh, how should I say it like they don't have text they don't have you know uh, words to read so everything should be for example like if if it's some kind of a shop, it's like just logo of what shop is selling. It's it was so much fun. And th- there's books in this movie, but the books don't contain uh, any words. So the thing is, uh, it's just all art books. <laughs> <laughs> so for example, here's here's the like some page with. Uh, one of the scene so here's all the you know kitchen stuff and it's based on russian uh like really old uh how should i say it? T- tableware how should i say it in english you know like uh, silverware and... yeah, yeah yeah and it, it's uh, like it's based on on russian old stuff i've seen as a kid so this is the samovar and it's like a big kettle and it always make your uh, tea like uh, hot, in hot state but I also added like uh, differences so for example uh, in the tables of this world it's not just uh, you know uh, normal table when in a place where you're supposed to see it, there's like a little bit uh, how should I say that so here like an imperfection uh, yeah so it's like a wooden table right and like sometimes you have the wood is not a regular in terms of how the pattern goes and when you cut it it has that imperfection in shape yeah so this shape is here for a person to be like more comfortable with using mm-hmm. all this, uh, you know uh, all these uh, plates and it was like really fun to do so for example here is the plate but in the plate you can see that there's a little bit imperfection for your spoon to be there, you know, like a little nook, yeah. So, 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 really fun, really fun. So, like different types of alcohol. It's a lot Here's of attention to details. <clears throat> yeah. Here's the books, and this one is books about animals. So there's like this little animal. This books about travel. So there's like I'm sorry about the picture quality. It's like because it's 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 what's official in the internet. I can't show you like the. Big yeah, label. of course, of course. Book. We're done the like uh, book of design of our movie it's like 90 percent just just my stuff <laughs> what i've drawn for that really fun so this is the book about you know flowers it's the book about the berries really cool and uh, when designing the uh, houses for this location i was having so much fun i've even done the plans of the all, all of this uh houses because i was really interested like in in a plan it's like uh triangle right and i was mm-hmm. like it's a, it's a hotel but in in a triangle plan can i move uh, can, can i put a three rooms of exact size on any on uh like every floor because you also need to have uh you know the stairs to get from floor to floor how should i do it and yeah it's interesting that uh, like this is two floors and one have like they they have different plans of how like rooms are there and the thing is like Characters don't go inside this hotel. They're just watching it from outside. And I was just thinking, I, I really wanted it to, to be planned like triangle because all, all of this city is all like triangle based. You can see mm-hmm. there's a lot of triangles. And I, I needed to understand for myself, is it possible? Is it, if, is it possible to, you know, uh, re, uh, like create this uh, house for real? And after I like, yeah, you can do that. I put it there. So it was like so much fun. For example, this is the store who is selling, you know, vegetables and it have this uh, vegetable logo. So mm-hmm. no words in this. 
uh, movie. So it's like Star Wars, right? There is no English words on like on the ships on anything, but ev- everybody's talking English. So he's like this, like they come uh, characters come to the other world and everybody's talking Japanese. <laughs> <laughs> but there's no Japanese like words. So much fun. How much uh, how much time you spend on the project? Like since it's I guess it started 2016, correct? Uh, it started in 2017, mm-hmm. and the thing is, uh, yeah, I I worked for two years in that. Okay. Yeah, dude, that's a lot of work. That's a lot of work. Um, I, I but don't it, remember. It was so much fun, man. <laughs> oh yeah, I mean, I can tell you were like completely obsessed about it. I I'm like, the enjoying to it. So, there like really cool story about how I'm enjoying that. So there's a scene when the main character, uh, she's in the cat's, uh, how should I put it? Like, where's the judge and stuff? The place where the judge is sitting. The court? Court. She's, she's in the court and her her scene was that she pulled the uh, tail of her pet cat and the cats uh, who was holding this uh court session they was like we need to punish you and uh suddenly uh there's a tail like coming out of her back and they they are just putting the tail like making her like you know hurt and stuff Mm -hmm. and i I was reading the script and i was like hi uh, like uh, kichi (laughs) harasan can we also put a cat ears on her and he's like, no. <laughs> I was like, why? I don't like cat ears. And I was like, no, please let me do it. And the fun stuff is, he's like, no. And I, I just, in my free time, I've done the sketch of uh, the main character with tail and ears and show it to him. And he's like, okay, I, I see you like really want the ears to be there too. So yeah, let's put it in storyboard. <laughs> and he, yes, he's done the ears. Too. <laughs> So so cool. So I'm um, I'm I like big fan of cat ears because uh, I can't even explain it. Uh, cat ears on the character's head, changing the balance of how you see the face. So face becomes smaller because uh, you know. Uh, yeah, ears. you're adding a volume. Yeah 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 yeah. Adding volume on the top, so uh, okay, uh, face becomes smaller, and because of ears, they are you know on the top not on the left and right you can see the v-shape in between the ears and mouth and it's concentrating you more on the face uh so i i really love that <coughs> yeah so, i'll show you this cat girl yeah i'm, I'm, I'm yeah. super curious about the movie now <laughs> i mean i, I want to watch it because you, you've worked on it obviously you know uh, we've known each other for a while now, and it's you know, always fascinating with how you're progressing with your work. And but you know, like here's the here's the funny part, um, and we'll get back to this real quick. But here's the funny part, like unless unless someone actually saw your work, like more recent work, it's it, vast majority of the stuff you're posting is is basically um, personal work, and it's very it's very like how to put it in the right words it's almost like it's not it's not surprising but it's like oh yeah for sure he 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 managed to get to that spot with with this animation project right because like I, I look at i always looked at the, um the drawings you do um and the progression and like the the sh- just the sheer volume right it's very difficult in my opinion to maintain the volume in which you're you're working uh you have to be like there's something in you like there's like a little uh little dna that tells you like do it do it do it do it do it <laughs> you know what i mean yeah um the thing is, is what kind of destroyed me as well because uh, <laughs> i'm always in urge to grow something and if i'm not drawing something i feel bad about it you know 
I think so there's something about right now, and I was like, I could draw right now, not just talk, <laughs> but go and talk, man. And I feel really bad about it. You know? <laughs> but yeah, the thing is, like, my personal works and my works on the movie is like really different because uh, my personal work is is like main, you know, main concentration of what I do is the girls, right? So why is that? Why why do I draw girls so much? Because the girls like are girls. the hardest thing to draw. Girls, you know, so we draw the girl's face, and she wants her to look cute and beautiful and fashionable and stuff. And even this little, like, small mistake, or you like you moved a, a, an eye a little bit too further, and she don't look cute anymore. This is hard. So <laughs> I'm practicing drawing girls, so I could just you know sit and draw a cute girl without like fixing a lot of. Stuff. So, like, I, I really love drawing animals a lot, you know. I really love drawing landscapes. Uh, I Like, uh, in, in college, I was in architecture. Uh, mm-hmm. And I was, like, I really loved just drawing hard surface stuff, you know, like cubes in perspective, like cool, you know, locations in perspective. I really like, like, guns and cars, you know. <laughs> And like male characters, and you know, just scary creatures. I really like big fan of horror stuff, like zombies. But the hardest of all of this is the girls, so I'm practicing them a lot. <laughs> so people just starting to think like, it, it, can he draw anything else? <laughs> just drawing girls. He, maybe he's not good at drawing male uh, ca- characters, or he's not good at drawing like, uh, you know, uh, backgrounds. So it, it's just what, what I want to practice. That's why I'm drawing girls so much. But on this movie, like, uh, I've drawn a lot of stuff, like, other than girls. So girls is the less I, I was drawn because there was, like, crazy amount of locations. So we have, like, 12 locations that look really different with a lot of interiors, with a lot of, you know, detailed stuff inside, like, all, all of this stuff just just on the you know on the shelf there uh, it just uh i draw a lot of stuff like what is that what is that i all think about what's the function of this stuff so it was so much fun because uh, it wasn't girls it, it was some other interesting stuff and they didn't pay me for me right and i was like yes they can pay pay me for not drawing girls so <laughs> <laughs> well i mean we we as an artist, you know, we we like to do what there's I guess two layers to it, right? Like one would be what drives you uh, as yeah. an artist, right? So you you always want to learn and progress and do something that you feel is progressing your skills and and pushing you towards that new level. Um, and it it can branch off to like trying different things or becoming an absolute perfectionist. In a, in a specific domain, right? But there's also just like what just interests you, you know? Um, yeah. And yeah, it does, doesn't, doesn't matter. Like, you know, I, I when I hear an argument like that from people, I was like, oh, you only do this. Like, yeah. sh- sure. And? You know? <laughs> like, what, yeah. is, what is the if other... If you don't like drawing of the girls every day, just don't follow me. This, this is how, how I work. I, I draw girls. Yeah, it's like saying to... It's like going to a basketball player is like all you do is playing basketball yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah you're right it's exactly like that this this is what i do man if you don't like what i do why why do you why why are you talking to me right now right? yeah i mean it, a lot of comes down to like I, i've learned to understand that um you know it's it, it's kind of it's kind of weird to put it this way but to me to me, there's a, there's a clear distinction between creative people and non-creative people, right? There's everyone has his own strengths. I can I'm pretty sure vast majority of non-creative people are like way better at business, for instance, right? If you think about <laughs> creative people, like we're so bad at business and making um, money. That's just it's numbers, just, you know. It's just it's just numbers, but like to me, they don't compute. <laughs> yeah. Um. Right. But it's just a. I, I think it comes down to perspective of understanding what the craft is, but also just just having enough knowledge, right? And knowing, okay, like it's 
it's not only just like oh i take a pencil and and i spend a little bit of time and then i i've learned how to draw and, and now i can draw right yeah, yeah like there's there's maybe certain certain amount of skills you can you can achieve that way but but then there's like this it's like um it's like a tip of an iceberg you know just just having a little bit of skills in drawing is it's like the tip but then going through that last 20 25 percent of what what paramounts to like the quality of work um yeah like that 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 extra level that you know an average person i would and I, I would even argue a lot of artists cannot cannot tell what exactly is in it but they can tell that it's okay like this guy's work is there's something special about it right and i guess when you tra train your eye enough you can start to notice those those you know the, the the areas in which you put so much attention to details that for it makes sense because you believe in it because it's been thought out like to the detail you know yeah you need to have some drive for like it, it's it's not easy to get really good at drawing because you need some reason to just do it every day right you need some reason to improve you need to some reasons to not hating on what you do right <laughs> so i believe like my my this obsession with drawing cute girls are helping me out with my just skills because if i'm not having fun while drawing i will not do that right so yeah of course of course i i, I was can't remember which um because i you know i've i've i've, I've spoken about this on numerous podcasts already I, i'm pretty sure whoever's listening to it is like machi shut up already <laughs> um but i've been i've been like reading about psychology a little bit you know watching different panels i i really enjoy watching psychology related and brain development related panels i i don't know there's like a weird fascination in it just to understand yeah. human beings in general and you know i like to watch those uh those not only ted talks but there's like you know university discussions where they invite yeah. um you know like mds and professionals and, and researchers to talk about like different aspects of like what's been researched uh and you know stuff like that and it's it's really fascinating about you know like the the dry the driver of who we are and like what what kind of different uh traits build different humans you know like how dna and um the way we're, we we were raised like how all yeah. of those elements layer onto like who we are as people because like i think i think people take a little bit too simplistic approach to to someone else's work and being uh, and yeah. what i mean by that is like it's it's you know sometimes you hear this like oh just like pull yourself by the bootstraps and you know you'll you'll be good or those uh, when you when you listen to those self-help books um yeah. if you listen to it from the very shallow perspective it's it's very easy to to have a very shallow understanding of it as well you know it's like Oh, like if you work ten thousand hours, you know the the, the ten yeah, thousand hour rule. It's like it's you, you're gonna that. be awesome. Like, n yeah, maybe if if every other layer that that is supposed to be there is there, you know. Yeah. So um, for for me, uh, ten thousand hours idea is uh, you, you, we need to add something to that. So it's not just do just ten thousand hours of work. You need to. Uh, you know, analyze, analyze, and learn new stuff while doing that. So if you just draw the the, the circle for ten thousand hours, right? You're gonna be a you'll be like of pretty good at drawing <laughs> just the circle. That, that yeah. that's it. Yeah, exactly. But it's it's not only that. It's just like it's just your attitude. You know, attention to details, like. You can tell if someone if someone's like a real artist, n not on the surface, but like just by listening to um, the way the way they approach things, you know, 
some of my yeah, for me it's, mm, for me it's like having fun while we do that right so yeah yeah <laughs> but i want to you know i'm kind of like going around the circle because i want to go, go back to the this one thing you've said uh which i found fascinating it's like you know you like doing that and like even just talking now and not drawing is like ah, oh, like I want to draw. Like this is yes. this is what it's not like I want to draw. I feel urge. It, it's not the pleasant pleasant feeling. Like oh oh my god, I want to draw something. No, and it, you need to draw now. If you don't draw now, yeah. you don't improve. If you don't improve, why do you draw in at all? Like it, it's like it's negative stuff. You know, it's not a good. So thing. like my question is like, don't you? Um, and I'm pretty sure it. You, uh, the answer I, I I'll hear from you is is the exact answer I'll expect. Don't you feel like if you're not doing enough, even though you're doing way more than an average person would do, right? In, specifically towards that, uh, in terms of the capacity of like how much time you're putting specifically to drawing, don't you think yeah. like if you're not putting hundred fifty percent, meaning you're not sleeping, you're you, like you feel lazy. Yes, I feel <laughs> like I don't deserve. See, I to, knew it. <laughs> to all like all the you know all the followers, all the patreons who support in my art, I don't deserve people who are saying that I'm good. I I don't deserve that if I'm not you know doing my like really best. You know, mm. it's yeah. it's like it's really like anxiety feeling. It's it's not good stuff. It's it's killing me little by little, right? <laughs> but thanks to that, thanks to that, I, I'm I can do this body of work like you know, thousands of pictures for the movie in in two years. I I, I didn't know I can do that, right? Uh, I didn't know I can like draw illustration a, a day for for years. But uh, just just this anxiety of I need to I have this responsibility to know you know to all the fans. To all the people who are enjoying my work, I have responsibility to just do my best, and uh, it's like I'm, I'm scared of it. You know, I don't like it. <laughs> take time off, dude. I'm you, take some, take some time uh, you off. Know, even if I'm just, you know, traveling around the country, uh, like seeing stuff, um, I always feel like I need to draw this, I need to draw that, I need to draw here. <laughs> When, when I give it back to the hotel in the other city, I'm just drawing because I'm, oh my god, I didn't draw for 10 hours, maybe I forget how, how, the, how to draw like person's face or how the hands look like. It's like, it's really anxiety. <laughs> yeah, when I, when, I, um, when I go for a trip, like we can get away uh, with family, they hate me. They just hate <laughs> me because like, I either like, okay, like I've spent five minutes with you guys, now it's time for me to draw or, or, or i'm out <laughs> yes. taking photos you know it's like yeah. wait didn't we go for like a family trip yeah but only for like 10 minutes a day and then i'm out <laughs> yes. it's very like, yeah it sounds like like you were not enjoying their company but you are it's just you have this you know constant feeling of you know other other uh responsibilities that have you yeah so. there's something about the drive you know and um, it's it's very difficult to explain to someone who doesn't have that, you know, or is they they don't like to a person that does not have the intensity of the drive, and I, it's a blessing and the curse, I think, because it's a blessing because the amount of time you're spending on something makes you so that you become really good at it, yeah. uh, which is rare. Like you don't have, there's not that many you know, quote unquote, talented people doing really impressive work. There's not that many talented athletes, you know, that are on like the highest level. There's uh, hundreds of thousands, if not millions of art uh, of athletes, right? That yeah. do sports, but they're not on the Olympic level or, or on the level where they, they, um, they're in the team that isn't in a, like a national championship, for instance, right? Olympic yeah. is like whole another level too. Same with music. You have millions of musicians, but there's only a bunch of them that are like, oh my One God, month. like, holy right. hell, like how good they are. Um, there's always like some weird outliers that kind of made it for whatever reason. <laughs> that always happens. But they they very rarely like persist for a long time. But like icons of music, you know, like Queen. I mean, yeah. 
holy hell like how good they were you know and they're still like to to these day to till today like they're still awesome yeah. but it, i think what's what's obscured is the the amount of like the intensity that goes into the work and like commitment it's very hard to balance and and so, sometimes i feel like sometimes i feel like it's really good to have that anchor somehow you know like maybe a family or friends that would just like pull you away it's like stop yeah like stop let's it. have some fun Take, yeah let's have, like be a human for a second you know? yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> um robot it's very difficult it's very difficult like it's it's just like you know family wise it's it's definitely causing frictions like every everyone i know that has a family like yeah. they all struggle with the families like oh, man yeah. like I, i'm arguing all the time you know my wife hates me it's like it's not <laughs> real it's not real hate but it's just like as you said like it's not it's not that you're not paying attention or not not having fun it's just like this other thing is just consuming you, you know? Yeah, yeah. You can't stop just thinking about it. You know, I have this, uh, uh, I don't really talk about it, but I have this really strange uh, stuff going on in my head and I, I'm kind of afraid it's it's not good. So if I'm looking at anything at all, you know, if I'm in a train in my room or, or in the streets, if I'm looking at something in the real world, if I see some imperfection in that, so for example, there's a poster on the wall uh, of the train, right? Mm -hmm. And it's a little bit uh, on, so it's not perfectly uh, like, how should I put it? It's it's a little bit uh, not horizontal, right? Right, yeah, yeah. It's like so in my head, I open Photoshop, like select this poster and uh, like doing a little bit fixing that it, it's happening not with with uh, without myself want to do it it's happening in my head like automatically and i was like oh my god I, this again so <laughs> if i see the wall and there's some you know dirt on that i in my head i open photoshop and do this clone brush stuff and just like you know clear the wall and uh, and it, it's it's bugging me so much like my head is always like trying to find all these mistakes to fix because that's what I do in illustration, right? So I done the rough sketch. I need to like really find all the mistakes right now. So I flip the canvas, right? I try to fix everything as fast as I can. Then I do like line art then I do colors then I'm trying to find the mistakes a lot again, right? So in my head doing that, even when I'm not drawing, right? It, it's bugging me so much. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, of course. Of course. Like you know any it's like this weird obsession about you know being a perfectionist to to a certain degree, you know. It can spill into your life really easily. <laughs> I've noticed that. It's like it bugs me if you know, I like to have I'm not like the most clean person out there in terms of like keeping everything pristine, right? For instance, but I like to have some kind of order around me. Like if there's too much mess, I cannot tell what's going on, but I can tell I feel bad about it, you know? So yeah. it's, there's always like a, a, a point where there's a l little too many things on my desk. I'll, I'll, I'll like freak out, be super obsessed about like, I need to clean it up like right now. No matter oh. if I am in the deadline with the client or whatever, like this has to be cleaned up, you know. And I want to have that too. Like, check out my screen. It's the workplace in the studio when I was working on a movie, <laughs> and you can say it's a mess. Yeah, I was I was freak out in that space. Maybe not freak yeah, out, but so, like, fuck, like I cannot work that way. <laughs> yeah, and for for some reason it not bugs me because all this mess is kind of organized. So on the right. We have my previous designs, so I should get back to them to, you know, have the consistency. On the top, we have, like, on the right desk, right? Uh, here's the plan of designs I need to do. Here's the character designs of the character. I'm doing the animation supervising right now. Here's my favorite, like, art books of my favorite artists. Uh, here's the figure. <laughs> <laughs> So here's the the digital desk. Digital desk. I'm I'm working on. For example, if I need to color something, uh, here's the design uh, of all the movies. So it's characters, locations, makeup, 
my favorite art books here. And here's the scenes I need to fix next here, right? Uh, yeah, they're everywhere because there's a lot. <laughs> and so I know where where should I look to get some information? What should I took to, you know, to, insp to for inspiration? So it's kind of organized, but, you know, I, I understand how it looks like, but it's not bothering you're too me. consumed by, about the work you know <laughs> yeah I, I don't see it as a mess i i see it as you know a work workplace but i know it's not beautiful stuff to but, but i know what you mean like dude if there was like a commercial with like a landscape and the li like the horizon line would be a little tilted not like my god intentionally tilted for a design purpose but like just like tilted because of someone's like ah eh, whatever like, I don't need to fix no. that. I'll be like, oh, oh my god, I so can't. I'm not buying your products I, ever, you know. <laughs> like I, I, I also like really picky about design of the, you know, how should I say it, like font, like books, uh, words on like on the books or mm -hmm. on the commercial. If I see this some like strange stuff happening with kerning, I'm, I'm like freaking out, I, and I, I better not see this post. <laughs> like, it's it's crazy. It's like I can't do I can't do like beautiful design like fonts and you know the compositions of the just design elements, but I'm um, I just really bad with like not like Im imperfect design mm -hmm. and like free it's crazy. So there's a person we, we're right now we're working on my next art book and uh, design uh, guy is the same guy who done the previous book and he's like. He's a star, you know, and nice. when, when I see his works, he's like, you know, you know, it's it's not like perfect, like everything on its place. Not not just like this. It's always have some fun uh, twist in designs. And like I'm I'm like respecting him so much. And like the thing that I, I can't do stuff like this, it's making making me love his works even more. <clears throat> Yeah, once you get into that that design space, you know, it's very easy to to get like really dive into and get like tangled with with yeah. little details. It starts with fonts for sure. <laughs> yeah, fonts, fonts is crazy. Yeah, once I've learned a little bit about fonts, you know how how spacing works. I, I'm not by any stretch of imagination good at it, but no, I understand a little bit. I understand enough to understand like what what makes for a font, like how yeah. they are designed. And then when I see like one, those those freaky, you know, funky, weird <laughs> fonts, it like some of them are are done well because of the like how they are spaced, you know, how the lines are constructed, and like the balance between each font, you know, that kind of stuff. But some of them are like. Like how on earth you would ever decide to use that kind of font, you know? <laughs> what what drives me crazy is like if someone stretches an existing. Oh no property. no 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 no! <laughs> don't talk about. It. Oh my god, I hate that. Like the phone was designed to be in this shape, you know, and if somebody just stretching it, or like, you know, oh my god, this is so ugly. Yeah, it's like, it's like uh. It's like a random person going on the set of The Shining, g going over to Kubrick's like, hey, hey, like, step aside, let me fix your camera angle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, funny stuff, dude. What what else is going on with you? Like, what 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 is um what's next for you? I mean, obviously, there's um there is a certain degree of NDA that we cannot talk about. Yeah. Um, I'm sure you're working on projects that. Uh, I guess we will come back to <laughs> one, one another time. That would be yeah, awesome. <laughs> but, you know, how is, what, what do you think, like, on the personal level, you know, you've mentioned last time we spoke that you, you really enjoy animation and, and it seems like that was your, like, one of the major goals to actually learn uh, how the, the whole pipeline works and, and you yeah. know, be in that production uh, environment and do, like, kudos you know like he did it so well <laughs> it's like it, it's it's one thing to join a join like uh join an industry and and work in it and then just just do some illustrations some you know concepts and whatnot and have yeah. like your own sort of like footprint 
into a project it's a very yeah. different thing to join a project and just basically let's make it about like let's make it me look <laughs> 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 but like i i i'm, I'm i know this it wasn't your intention like let's just make everything look like it's it's mine but it's just like the amount of effort you put into you know organically made it that way uh obviously it's like with like with any project like that i think that goes without saying it's it's a huge huge uh team effort and it's it's like you cannot do it with do it yourself it's impossible especially on that scale um but yeah i'm, I'm curious like what do you think is next for you in terms of like your goals and what do you see yourself in you know your skills yeah. development like what's what's driving you you next because there's you always know, the next thing right yeah it's like on for four years it, it's, it's all planned now so <laughs> yeah. i can't talk about anything about it but you know uh i always my my biggest dream was to like my first biggest dream is to like write books mm -hmm. create stories uh, you know, for people to enjoy, for people to find some motivation in it. And my second dream is like to become animation director. And yeah. while working on this movie, like I made it really clear to everyone uh, around, like that I want to be like animation director. Please let me do something like this. And in the promotion materials for the movie, like my like Cage Hari, director of our movie, always talking about like. This guy wanted to be director, so like I really uh, show him showed him a lot of stuff. So they are like kind of promoting me as the the guy who can who who wants to become director. So uh, I think uh, it's this way. And the, the projects I working on right now, they actually uh, gonna give me some of the storyboards some of the scenes so I can, you know, decide on how the camera moves, how the characters moves and all of that, you know. Uh, and I have this original stuff in my head, in, not in my head, like I have this manga I've done like 80 pages. So yeah, the stuff about this manga is before getting this job on the animated movie, I was working on my like original manga and uh, I stopped it because I needed time to work on the movie so I've done all the script for for five books and I've done like 80 pages like two chapters and and then didn't then stop because of the movie but yeah I still have this material right so I want to pitch pitch that to uh to some people uh to some people you know to some companies I, I can I can say uh like names here yeah it's a lengthy process you know like going from your creating your ip through you know um pitching process and then talking with yeah. the people and seeing if it's going to be picked up or not yeah we, we were talking to like i was talking to producers of some companies and i was really surprised that i, I was saying like i can do not i can do like not original but you know like do an anime ver ver version of some manga or maybe some book or anything so it, i'm i'm not like i just do want to do original let me do like anything and they're like but we already want you to do your original and i was like well okay <laughs> why is that <laughs> <laughs> yeah so i'm I'm really hoping that uh it's gonna go anywhere you know from right right now i like right now i'm working on one anime series and one animated movie and a couple of games but i i really want to kick start like my my own di direct uh, director career like really soon maybe this year but you know you, you can't say this yeah you cannot tell well that's that's gonna happen but you know knowing you <laughs> who knows <laughs> who knows it's definitely it's definitely possible you know it's it's it just all come down comes down to um the amount of effort and you know, I, attention uh, you put into things. This, yeah, working on this animated movie, I realized that the most important thing is the connections. So, if you know the CEO of the like production IG, you can ask to work on something with them, right? If you know CEO of other company, you can talk to him and pitch him his project. 
if you don't know them, you can do that. Even if you have some like like real yeah. good ideas and you've done some uh, cool things before, if you just don't have their you know email address, you don't have their business card, you don't you, you, you don't met them through the other people, you know, it's not nothing's gonna happen. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Um, more than skill, more than your ideas, your connections important. Yeah, I, I think you. St- it works exactly the same in film, you know? Like, when you work in the, in the film industry, I think there is certain level of skill that you need to have to even yeah. have connections, you know, to begin with. And it's usually yeah. pretty high. Um, yeah. So, do you want to meet this guy? Who's that? No. Yeah, exactly. It like, it do you want to meet this guy? Uh, like, he have a lot of followers on Instagram. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so the thing is, like my social network numbers are really helping me out. Like if if I don't of have, course. of course, if I didn't have a lot of followers on the Instagram, the person who contacted me to create my first art book called called Momentary, uh, if we not created this art book, the director would not see it in the bookstore and not give me yeah. the job movie. So. All thanks to my Instagram followers, you know, uh, because it, it's looking like, oh, wow, so many people follow him. Maybe he's good. <laughs> because, like, <laughs> I, I, I like uh, like if your work so is not many so, great no. artists with so like little followers because they not just don't post a lot there. They're working on yeah, but, there's uh, many reasons I feel, you know, it, I, I think it's it's I think it's a really important thing to say where you know like one one might say like oh the 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 amount of followers do- doesn't mean anything like yeah y- yeah maybe like I, I agree there is there there are artists that you know there is I, I mean we both know at least you could you could count them on on more than your two two hands right artists yeah. that are so te- like so, so amazing and they have like no following there was many yeah. reasons like they could be not posting enough uh, or they are posting like the the art style that they do, maybe it's not jiving with the general public, right? No, 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 no. It's but all about how much you post, you know. On Instagram, the more yeah, you post, maybe. the more the algorithms. It, the more people find your work. That's it. So my my works are not good, but nah, you're, that's, you're, there's a lot of them. You're downplaying it. <laughs> I I, I <laughs> think I think there's you know there, there there's always a reason why people follow someone, and it's. Of course, you know sometimes it has to do with with the amount of work you, you you produce. I mean, just the fact that you produce so much work tells something about the person, right? It, it tells a lot about the person, about like how much attention to the craft that they're giving to. And I think people appreciate that. I think people recognize the idea that oh, like if I follow this guy, I, I'm pretty much guaranteed that. Almost like, like almost about? every day I'll see ah, something yeah, yeah, yeah. amazing, right? So it's like, yeah, like so subscribing to something and like having the regularity of it, stuff. right? Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm proud of? I'm really proud of um, not my... Uh, but there has to be like, just, I'm just going to interrupt you for a second. There has to be quality sorry. to it because you can post every day and be average and you're not going to get the same traction. Uh, yeah, this, yeah, I know, I, I know it's these two things, actually, of course, if you post every day, like, just, you know, white, white squares, nobody could care less <laughs> to follow you, right? But, <laughs> you know, um, uh, the biggest thing I'm proud of, of my Instagram, it's not the number of the followers, it's the, uh, like, how many of the followers are uh, female or male? How do you think? How like which? which I don't know. Fifty-fifty. No, like it's sixty percent female followers. Damn, brother. Yes, and I'm really proud of that because my my uh, Instagram is a giant cock fest. (laughs) (laughs) It's like eighty twenty easily. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I don't like. I honestly like never pay attention to that because like I, it's kind of coming back to, but it's fascinating actually, you know. But and I, I sometimes ask myself like, hmm, um, like wh- why why is that? You know, 
like I do ask myself that question, but I never pay like enough attention to like actually do something about it because I don't mm. think that's the point of like what I'm doing personally. And it yeah, comes sure. back, it comes back to what you were saying, you know, like there's certain certain degree of like I really like doing that specifically. It's yeah. it's my passion, like it's my my bread and butter. You know, I live every day to actually do exactly that. It just makes me a happier person. Um, and I think that's that's way more important than the artificial like ratio or like ratio of who's who's yeah. like enjoying your work like for each their own i think you know if some people yeah, yeah. enjoy certain you know <laughs> work others enjoy different kind of work you know yeah i just meant it's that's how i want it to be right so uh, that's I'm doing that's great shit. man that's awesome yeah. <laughs> i actually need to ask like i need to figure it out like <laughs> no I'm joking uh no, but yeah, it's, it's, dude, like I feel like, like last time we talked, you you were like at the million. Now it's like one point six. It's so crazy. I don't <laughs> like my my brain does not comprehend. That's so crazy. I I just cannot compute those numbers. You know, I have yeah, you know, too. I I I trying to not think about it, but like if you think about it in the way of your responsibility to all these people, it's like it's damaging. You know, oh my mm. god. <laughs> I need that's to a very interesting way of thinking. You know. And like for hundreds, hundreds of thousand people would see this when I post it. Like maybe it would make them their day better. Maybe uh, it would make they they worse. And that's a lot of responsibility. Yeah. Oh, I wanted to talk about like one thing. Like there is this. Like why why my illustration can make person day worse. You you have any ideas? How many people like react? And and just you like, makes uh, makes their day. See my illustration of the girl and feel bad. Why is that? Oh, someone feels bad because they see that illustration. Like I don't yeah. get it. No, I, I I have no okay, idea. Let me explain. So, for some people, uh, artists that post their illustration on the internet are flexing their skill. You know, uh, there's some people who think that I'm showing off when I'm post my illustration so that sometimes there's comments like oh my god why why can't i draw like you i feel so bad about myself oh i know what you mean you know yeah and they feel like b bad about like seeing my illustration because oh i want to draw like this but i can't but i'm i'm showing the illustration not for anybody to feel bad i'm showing the illustration because i'm sharing what's important to me right i'm sharing my you know, obsession with short haired girls with, you know, glasses and choppers. I'm sharing my obsession with drawing every day, right? I'm mm -hmm. sharing my ideas. And sometimes people just see it as, oh my God, he's just sh showing off like, look at me, I'm so good at drawing. Here's my new drawing. Fuck this guy. And they are cool. <laughs> and I have two it's... answers to this, uh, but I'll let, you, I'll let you finish first. It's like uh, if if people want to feel bad about something, they will, right? Yeah, uh, yeah, exactly. The thing is, it's not what I want to do with my illustration. It's making me like really sad when when people saying that. Like um, for, for for me, like the logic by seeing someone's awesome work that is better than yours or something, right? In the internet is is a positive feeling because wow, if he can do that. That means that I can do that too someday, right? Or or right now? Or right. Should I? It's like it's it need to be my way, right? Unless uh, you see LeBron John, Le LeBron James uh, dunking, <laughs> dunking the ball. <laughs> like I'm never gonna be seven feet tall. Fuck. <laughs> it's not there for you, for you to feel bad. Like see, yeah, like, the exactly. Model, photo or actress or actor in the internet. And they are, you know, beautiful and stuff. You don't need to feel bad about that. You are not them. You are you. What you're doing, it's what you're doing. And if you like what I do, it it should be like motivating you to to do something like this. And and that's it. So. Yeah, I think the popular cult culture and the way social media works is intensive. And in, you know, it, it giving giving people an incentive to to behave that way. I was I was listening to um gosh which episode was that it was one of the joe rogan's episode i think he had uh jonathan hyde um 
who was like doing research about social media and um and he was mentioning something about uh the idea of um you know hateful comments versus positive comments and it was it was in relation to yelp specifically that uh on average vast majority of positive comments usually are pretty long or very very short so if someone really enjoyed like the restaurant for instance right they will write like a lengthy review saying like how awesome it was or they will just write like it was good you know like it was awesome it's tasty. nice <laughs> yeah, but but like generally like very long lengthy review which is on the rare side but mostly like very short concise like i loved it it was awesome it was great i loved it like that kind of stuff right but yeah. then uh the negative comments were like pretty short pretty inconsistent like ah, i hate it it's just like you know very limited in terms of yeah. like in term in terms of substance and then you know i think they they made a con conclusion that the f like on twitter for for instance because of the limit of how many words twitter allows you to post it in intense incentivize the idea of posting negative things and like i mean pretty much vast majority of people know that twitter is mostly negative you know yeah instagram is mostly positive because images mostly right um yeah and you know go, going back to what you said uh you know i have to like I, I said i have two answers to this like one is like well haters haters is gonna hate <laughs> <laughs> it's like you cannot do anything about it it's just like the that mentality i think it's very it's very toxic to to pay attention like it's it's a toxic mentality because it brings nothing to the table meaning like yeah it's it's also bad because they're hating on themselves not on me you know they right hate themselves because they can do stuff like this and that's not what i want yeah but, but i also think like the more polite answer to this would be it's only a spotlight you know like what you're doing you know regardless of your intentions like just just putting away intentions of why artists decide to share the work that they do right yep. whether it's just to flex or just to share ideas or they feel happy about doing like whatever is the reason they're doing that right what is yep. being missed a lot of times and I, I and you can catch yourself doing that yourself towards other disciplines is that behind each of those new posts of, of work the, the new body of work that comes out there is years and years and years of endless hours sleepless nights parties you missed relationships <laughs> you didn't have um you know knows you said to friends that wanted to go out just because you wanted to improve on your skills you know i think a lot of people think tend to forget that you know like the last time i played a video game like actually played a video game it was like yeah. a year ago maybe what was that yeah, uh, god of war <sighs> mm, spider-man i can't Spider remember no I, I i don't play like the new games like that okay. the the only game that i that i've played from start to f I, I might have been league of Le legends i just played it for a bit um okay. maybe something else but the last the last game that i actually f started and played from start to finish was the last yeah. of us and I, I was mostly because i was biased toward it, towards it um, man i finished the last of us three times nice yeah i finished it like three times or maybe four times as well have you played on grounded oh yeah of course this is the best this is the best way to play that game i, I agree with you 100 percent um but it's just like i i literally just don't have time you know i do have addictive uh addictive um you know personality as well so like when i when i start something i know it's i gonna get addicted to it you know eventually so i i, I specifically avoid games because i know they're they will be addictive to me um and that's bad because then then everything else is gonna hurt you know but like i've never partied you know on average i would say up until recently now i have a kid so it's a little different but until i had a kid like my average work day was like 16 18 hours and that's the, you know because because everything you do for yourself not not just work but but your personal work it's still work you still have to yeah. put effort towards it you know it's not like you're 
obviously you know just because you're enjoying doing something that that doesn't mean it's not work yeah, you know it's not work yeah <laughs> yeah exactly so and it's very easy to forget because like you, you um you look at the you you only look you're only looking at the snippet the end result right but yeah. there is this road this lengthy road of mistakes failures emotional you know roller coasters and and missed opportunities of regular life that that you just decided to that's not for me because like this is where my soul is at you know yeah there's a lot of sacrifices you know yeah nobody knows about it nobody knows about like anxiety and depression nobody knows about self-hate you know what's what's going on in the head of this person right Mm -hmm. You can see just this positive, like positive uh, illustrations of cute girls, like uh, interesting stuff, right? But maybe in the head of this person, he just wanted to kill himself for. <laughs> Don't do that, though. <laughs> you uh, know what it's, I mean? It's, it's Don't not, do that, though. <laughs> no, I'm joking. Uh, I mean, it's not a it's not a subject that should be joked about. But but yes, no, you, I agree with you. Like the, there's the the, the intensity that we, we have towards towards the craft is like it, it can drives you over it, can, it it definitely can drive you over the edge and you can see it in the pop not pop culture but like like how many musicians committed suicide in and past you know a couple of years you know when i was like it's crazy 20, 27 i was scared i'm 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 gonna end, end this as, as like kurt cobain and stuff like a lot of musicians died at 27 and i didn't want to be a part of that team <laughs> I but mean, like, yeah, it's it's very easy to get over the edge, you know, especially if you if you're doing something with that intensity. Yeah. But the yeah, but that's that's sort of like the reality that no one talks about. Um, so so that, as, as I said before, you know, like the more I learn about psychology, it's like, oh yeah, you you, you kind of have to have someone who's tell you gonna tell you like, yeah, but have a normal life for one day, you know, like just like a little anchor, just just yeah, like a, a little equalizer. Just not that Right. Yeah. <laughs> I want. I want to. You know. Sometimes just chill. You know, and relax. But they just can't. It, it, it's it, it's destroying. You know. I'll tell you what would help me. Um. Because yeah. I I was always on the edge of like the idea of that I'm not not doing enough and yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. Those those moments happen all the time. Like every now and then. It's it's like um. It's like a bell curve. You know. It, it goes up. And then it just goes all the way down, you know, from like ups, ups, where I feel like this is the happiest day of my life, you know, towards yeah. like, oh, this is the, the saddest day of my life. There's two sort of like lessons I took from learning about human psychology. One is I don't think pursuit of happiness is the way to go, yeah. because like if you if the only thing you care about, and I've heard it, this this specific thing is, I think, uh. If I remember it correctly, it's from the book from Jordan Peterson, 12 Rules for Life, where he says um, that, l I think it's from that book, or maybe it was from one of his talks, but he says like, if you're pursuing, and that, that's like, um, for those who don't know, I mean, everyone should know him already because he's just such a popular figure now. Um, but he's like, he, he's, he has been a, uh, clinical psychologist for like 30 years right so he knows what he's talking about yeah. but like if you're pursuing happiness that was like a very interesting argument like if you're pursuing happiness then what happens is you when something sad happens it's gonna hurt you like that much more because yeah. that's 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 completely against your your major pursuit right yeah. so the argument is instead of doing that pursue responsibility meaning you you have a goal or you want to feel responsible about something and then you're putting effort towards it whether it's going to suck or not you know like if it sucks that's a part of the game i'm just doing it because that's the pursuit you know mm -hmm. and it doesn't matter if it if it hurts or not like it, it matters that i'm doing it and it, i'm constantly progressing towards the, the towards what i you know towards that journey yeah i guess so that was yeah. that was the first thing that was like oh like that that's a very interesting perspective because like everywhere you 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 every video you listen to like out there like everyone's just be happy be yourself be happy be like everyone's telling you to be happy right it's kind of pressure right it's well a, it's i'm a not huge, happy 
yeah it's like w- when you're not happy it's like oh there's something wrong with me like i'm not happy yeah. anymore what's what's going on um but the second thing that i think helped me the most was i i literally unsubscribed from like vast majority of people i follow like i literally just like so that when i open facebook it's basically empty wall so i have nothing to do unless i'm <laughs> posting something same with twitter same with like instagram i only have like a couple of accounts that i follow that are like super inspiring that i know when i look at that i would know like okay yeah hell yeah you know mm. um so it's like it's avoiding me it's 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 basically when i when you go to when i go to facebook and i see there's nothing and i go an hour later and nothing changed because i'm not following anyone so there's no, <laughs> nothing like there's just literally nothing there there's only like posts posts from my friend ash and that's about it you know yeah then like it just makes you not want to go to facebook anymore you know unless you want to do specifically something like engage with people talk to friends or post something right yeah. same with twitter i don't read twitter i'll post something i'll read comments to see if there's like an interesting comment that i can reply to but yeah. that's about it i don't read I, I don't care like i don't care about the hashtags and and all that stuff yeah, all i yeah. care is like if if there's a person that can bring something to the conversation that's awesome because that's the opportunity if there is a person that has a critical comment that that is like i can see oh okay that makes sense uh yeah. then then i might engage with that if i have time but I, like I, otherwise it's just like i'd much rather do my work than than deal with that because what happens is like you know the, the most annoying thing is just just seeing everyone and I, it's it's a very easy trap to 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 uh to get into where you see everyone's being happy and painting their life to be awesome. You know, one of one of the parts of living in LA is that you know everyone is a bullshit artist here. Everyone <laughs> leave, l- lives in their bubble about their perfect life, totally forgetting that they're in debt. They li- live in a city that's way overcrowded, and their life is not just not perfect, you know. But they paint it that way, and so like to me, like a big wake up was like talking to some of my closest friends who on social media they would you know they would look like they have perfect lives but they just don't post about their life they just post like the the good work that they've done you know yeah. and then learning oh oh okay they do have problems just like myself you know yeah. but they just choose not to talk about it like pretty much everyone else a they don't want to share their personal life yeah. but also they just like don't feel they don't feel like they want to talk about it with with general audience you know but vast majority of people what they do is just they paint their lives to be this this awesome thing that is just not real you know yeah. and it's very easy to get into that trap where like oh my life is shit you know everyone's so perfect not me you know yeah yeah that's the same thing that people who like see my new picture and post like why why i feel so bad about that i can draw like this you know so <laughs> yeah it's very easy to to fall into that trap um yeah I, mean, I don't know like to me like unsubscribing was was the best thing i've ever done because i literally just like <laughs> it it cut the amount of time i sp- spent on social media like dramatically which made by the way me more productive you know yeah so yeah it helps to like not get exposed we are not meant to be exposed to so many people you know it's just like yeah. it's like this crazy thing we're not wired that way like the the human evolution of 250,000 years of living in in caves and worrying about you know not being eaten by by lions you know yeah <laughs> and now so much communication just by sitting in your room with your smartphone in your hand like yeah. hundreds yeah. of people talking to you at the same time yeah, yeah. it's crazy dude it's been a awesome conversation i'm so glad to see how you know everything was progressing to uh, for you past year <laughs> year and a half i think i think we, we had last uh, last conversation a year ago almost yeah. on the podcast so super happy for you dude yeah thank you so much i had so much fun just talking about the things because you know it's not like i'm mm, actually talk a lot with artist friends uh, so um, I kind of feel so much better now 
because you know <laughs> all, all of the things you understand to you know about the like scene stuff in the, around the world and you want to fix it in Photoshop and stuff all of that so, <laughs> the <thanks>. similarities <laughs> yeah 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 it's always good to talk you know we we we're, we're like this noc nocturnal creatures sitting in in you know our dark offices and hoping that you know and just like life is flying by and it's always yeah. good to just like you know like disconnect for a second and just talk you know share share your thought it, I, I i it's rare for me to actually do that <laughs> so. yeah I'm, I'm super proud like i'm the only podcast that i that I had you so far or like the first one at least so that's great <laughs> <laughs> awesome dude thanks so much for for um for finding time again and and you know having a chat i mean i, I know we talk uh, a little you know every now and then sort of like catch up on on instagram yeah. and whatnot but let's yeah. do one more podcast next year uh, yeah hell yeah totally down totally down <laughs> all right let's wrap it up here um it was a good one thanks for thanks for being here man yeah, um thanks. everyone who's listening to this as well thanks a lot for for staying with us for past almost two hours. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I hope it flying. wasn't too, you know. <laughs> that was good, man. It was good. It was definitely good. And uh, yeah, if you're listening to this or watching this and you enjoy the show, just subscribe. Uh, whether it's on YouTube or other platforms, you can subscribe you anytime. What's up? Hmm? Uh? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. uh, subscribe give it a like you know <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly yeah subscribe give it a like and um and yeah um, share and share with other people yeah exactly share subscribe and uh and be awesome <laughs> 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 all right guys take care have fun and uh till the next time nice.